Our last video showed why creating an investment plan is an important stage in your investing journey. Now, let's take a closer look at what you should keep in mind when you're creating that plan. In the last course, we looked at how a personal financial statement and a personal cash flow statement can help you determine your financial picture. Mapping out your income, expenses, savings, and debt can give you a better idea of how much money can be put towards investing or whether you should focus on paying down debt. If you're ready to invest, what is your investment goal? Once you've determined what that is, you may want to ask yourself a series of questions to help carve out the details of your plan. Let's say, for example, that Matt has a short-term goal to build a $15,000 vacation fund over the next three years. If he has $500 to start and only plans on investing an additional $250 each month, will he reach his goal in time? Creating an investment plan can help him determine that answer. By entering a few key investment details, Matt sees an estimated trajectory of how much his fund might grow by the end of his timeline. He doesn't think his initial plan looks doable, so he considers how it can be adjusted. Does he have any expenses that he can reduce or eliminate altogether? Can he bring in any additional funds to help supplement his investment contributions? Or can he adjust the goal itself? Maybe instead of a $15,000 vacation fund, he lowers it to $10,000. Your timeline is a factor that you may want to consider for any type of goal, even if that goal is part of a long-term investment plan, like retirement in 20 or 30 years. Now, you might be wondering why that is. 20 or 30 years is plenty of time to build a retirement fund, right? Maybe. Let's look at Nadia, a young woman in her 20s who has a retirement goal. How might her life change over the next three decades? She expects to advance in her career, which will likely lead to a higher salary than the one she's currently earning. But her expenses may very well increase too. She may also want to consider taxes, inflation, and other significant life changes along the way, like a wedding or children, which may impact her finances. Another point to consider when identifying goals is that most people will have more than one. Some might be short-term and some might be long-term. When you're planning, consider what your investments will be used for. And if you don't know, that's okay. In fact, sometimes investors may not have a goal in mind for a purchase or a life event. Instead, their main goal is to reach a certain dollar amount. Ultimately, when creating your goals, remember to keep them smart. That's S-M-A-R-T. S stands for specific. Try to be as specific as possible when creating your goal. For example, instead of saying your goal is to buy a house, a specific goal could be to buy a detached house in a specific neighborhood and buy a specific date. M. M is for measurable. Ensure you have a way to measure your goal progress. One way you can do this is by setting reminders to review the performance of your portfolio. Next, A. Is your goal achievable? Consider whether you're giving yourself enough time to reach your goal and if you have enough income to support it as well. R, how relevant is your goal? Is it a top priority for you? And will you feel satisfied once you reach it? And finally, T, which stands for time. Does your goal have a timeline? If it does, consider whether you want your timeline tight or more flexible. If you add some buffer and then achieve your goal before the end of your timeline, it can feel more satisfying but some people like the added urgency that can come with a tight timeline. Ultimately, what you decide depends on your personality and how aggressive you would like to be with your goal setting. That's how you can be smart when creating your investment plan. You might also want to factor into your plan possible future expenses, including those that might be hard to predict. On the one hand, it can be fun to plan for future events, but of course, there are things that can happen in life that we just can't anticipate like illness or job loss. With this in mind, Nadia decides to build some flexibility into her retirement goal plan so that she can easily withdraw funds from her account in the event of a financial strain or emergency. This ability to easily access funds is called liquidity and it's something you might want to consider when you're creating your goal plan too. Building flexibility into her goal plan also has Nadia considering whether she should build a fund strictly devoted to emergencies. 
An emergency fund usually includes six to 12 months of expenses, but this can vary from person to person. When it comes to investments, the higher the risk typically means there is a greater likelihood of either higher return or higher loss. Everyone has their own risk tolerance, and this is something that you may want to learn before you start building your portfolio. So, how exactly can you determine the level of risk that you are not only willing, but able to take on in your investment goal plan? Watch the next video to find out.